Hello, and welcome back, everybody out there in Twitch and D&D land. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and follow us over on Twitch. But, you know, yeah, do that one if you want. Uh, pay attention to our social media as we are starting some shows inside of our living universe as well. And more fun things are coming in the future. Regardless. Boop. Nope, not that one. This one. N. You open the door, allowing air to fill inside, listening to a compression as this has been sealed off for so long, to start to wheeze its way outside of the door frame. You push it wider, and you see the large statue of the bipedal ram-like individual in the middle of the room. It's a very simple room, covered in rustic red and simple brown, but the trimmings of each of these sarcophagi look as if they were handcrafted with a purpose. The detail is remarkable. And as you step in, does anybody else join them? I will follow them. Okay. Roland will kind of Kai's a, by the uh, door. Gabe. Gabe is always within. Alrighty. So, Rowan, you stay by the door? Yes. Very well. I'm being watchful. Good, good. Do any of you have Primordial again? And As you step forward in here and look around at the chambers, you look at a large plaque in front of the ram-like individual. The Zealot's Legion of Ares is written in a very simple version of Primordial that seems related to what you would describe as common. To die on the battlefield is the honor we all deserve. To die saving our ideals needs to be remembered for the remainder of history. These tombs are those that sacrifice for their ideals, no matter what they are, no matter who they conflict. And I, Airy, swear that their death was glorious and they will remain triumphant till the end of days. I'll say it in primordial and then in common, kind of low and very like respectful of it. And then look to the group. I guess she was a, a warrior. So that would be the uh, player, not Gabe. Mm. 
Now which which one is hers? G Gabe does the fine sense. These grounds are hollow. Sanctified. A very strong presence of divinity is in here. Though it is not of a celestial nature, it is of an incredibly protective nature. This room is meant to be respected and safe. And there is a tremendous amount of magic here to ensure that these people will not be disturbed. So, you begin looking around. The first of the sarcophagi on your left-hand side. There's only eight in here, but the first one is labeled Luthawain Clearcoat. On the plaque, in the same type of writing that you recognize from the podium, in front of the statue of who you can presume to be Ares. It writes, Would not allow the enemy to starve. And each night fought her general to bring them food. The next one, Elgain Tusk. Fought impossible odds. Against Ares Army. allowing citizens of the twins to escape. The third one, Truth Drain. Betrayed her father, betrayed her home. To give life another chance. Lost and untethered. You're starting to wrap around this room. You're on the back wall, where there's only two of them that sit. The first one, Remy Sue. Warned the enemy 
of the approach of Ares. So they could evacuate. Executed on the battlefront. She's gonna blow! This one I'll keep private, but I'll type. Okay. Okay. You then walk around to the right side. Where there are three more. Tulip Co. Pacifist. And that word is written very small, like, eh, eh. Never left the front lines. Filton Crow. First to die in the War of the Zodiac. First to renounce all divinity and fight for the people. Havoc Reese Decimator of armies Medic at the end of each battle Last to sleep First to enter the fray Now you look at all of these, taking a step back, and sharing whatever you would like to share with your ally. I'll read them all in common. Not a single one sounds familiar to any of you, but the way that each of them is remembered is unique to only themselves. As if it was written just for them. 
by people who knew them and cared for them. These people gave everything for what they believed in. Although you can't discern easily which one may have been her. At least you know she was important. So, uh, and dear, which one? Thank you for reading all those for us. And which one was, um, which one are you here for? I don't know. My father said that she was Elvin. He knew her. So I don't know if any of these are Elvin names or. Unfortunately, none of them sound like names you've ever heard of. Here, things are a little different. Yeah. I'll send a message to Luna. Do you know which one is her? She'll reply. I do. Will you tell me? Only what you want to know. I want to know everything that you can. That you can tell me that you know. Well, may I come back in? Please. You all hear her loud heels dropping on the glass. She rounds the corner and just pushes past you, Rowan. And she walks over to the third one on the left-hand side. Truth Drain. Native to hell. Though I never cared to learn who her parents were. She... Betrayed them. They wanted her to hunt down a man that she was betrothed to. 
One that they were planning on politically marrying, but he had other plans, and so did she. So, when she found out that they were going to destroy her, she sought after someone that she had been watching for a long time from afar. So that she could leave a piece of herself untethered to hell. She was a marvelous massacring machine on the battlefield. Graceful, elegant, quick, frightening, even. Or so she's been described to me. I've never seen her fight, personally. I've only ever met her one time. But she apparently had a kind spot for people who refused to stay down. She looks past the sarcophagus, and you see her gaze and her mind are elsewhere, right? Thinking of home? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Luna. And I look over it, and... They um, taught me something important today. And I think you and I have a ritual to do. Well then, let's not waste any more time. <sighs> she hesitates as she says that and looks back at you and but speaks the fulcrum. You and I can go prepare. It'll take quite a little while. All of you, try not to get lost or in danger. And she begins walking out. No, Fulcrum! Um, and I follow. And that is unfortunately the absolute nicest she can be. I assume you'll stay here for several hours? Probably, yeah. Gabe by your side the entire time? As always. Rowan? Rowan's gonna try to just go with Luna and Fulcrum. Giving them privacy. Yeah. As you've begun walking down the hallway, Fulcrum and Rowan, Luna has already begun speaking to the two of you. Sorry, I said that wrong. Begun speaking at the two of you. <laughs> so, this ritual is going to be quite expensive, and of course I have accumulated as much of what I need as humanly possible. However, there are certain components of it that I need you to be aware of that are going to be a bit more difficult to maintain. The first of which is, you are going to be moving me back through time with your mind. I know about your connection and to whom you are connected to. Luckily, they are one of the only individuals who can influence this world directly. Therefore, your magic is still potent and attached and tethered to them. So, you are going to revert me back to that era, but my mind is going to be staying stilled by myself during this entire property of the ritual. There's going to be an aspect of which I will ask you to plunge this dagger 
She hands you a dagger. Deep into my chest. I would appreciate it if you could do it very assertively so that we don't have a hiccup of me living longer than necessary through the pain. Though it's not that great of a bother, I still rather not deal with it. And after you begin conducting the ritual, I will be dormanted inside of this form and rebirthed into who I previously was. Theoretically, my tether will be reattached to this form. Understood. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Now, Rowan. Yes. When we get back, I believe we are going to need to have a little conversation about your tableside etiquette while in an individual's home. Um. Okay. Rule one, you should not incestuously lurked with the individual who invited you to their home in front of their wife and child. I thought we were having this conversation later. Oh, we're going to go into much greater detail later. Okay. At that one, I actually need you to give me a charisma saving throw. Ugh. Yeah. This is, didn't I have to do one of these last time? You did, and it went so well. <laughs> you um, need Inn's charisma to pass her stuff. You oh. cannot willingly move within 15 feet of her. You are terrible. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> you're just like, hmm. Okay then. <laughs> Luckily, you're high enough level now that she's not insta kill you level. But I mean, maybe. <laughs> Which is why you're I'm not in. With her. <laughs> you're not in. Yeah. <laughs> So she continues walking, and she brings you over to a uh, different chamber that seems to have been completely erased of whatever used to be in here, and there are just stacks and mountains of books all around you. Um, she seems to have had, she seems to have about three tomes in total laid on the table, uh, all of which look incredibly old and are wide open. So this ritual should theoretically work, and. I trust you are smart enough to make this happen properly, correct? Yes, I should be. Very good. Um, now, one thing that I am lacking on is... A component of home. Do any of you have a feature that is discernibly from Solomon? An item, a uh, piece of the earth by any chance. She just She's staring at you when she's saying this, Rowan. Uh, maybe some mud between your toes, um, anything. Uh, I'm sure I've got something. Are there any pieces of <laughs> like water bark stuck to Rowan's furs? Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll an investigation. <laughs> Disadvantage because I'm horrified. Uh, you've got this, Ron, and I'll guidance. If anything, <laughs> you're highly motivated to get it done, right? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yes. Uh, 19, roll your d4. Let's see if you get a little better. Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, 21, clomped up in your uh, one shoulder pelt. Um, there's actually a very large, what looks like dingleberry, but it is just mud that's been mm -hmm. clumped there the entire time. Okay, Rona will pluck it off herself and, like, hold it out to Luna while staying as far away as possible. Luna waves three fingers, and then a magical hand plucks it from yours and brings it to her. See, I knew there was be a very good use for you, Rowan. I always rely on you to have these types of things, now can't we? Yep. Stuff really seems to stick to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, Fulcrum. Can you help me mold this very large piece of clay to look like me? And she drags out a large tub that's almost filled with clay that looks freshly mixed. Yeah, and I will <clears throat> do my best to help. Okay. 
and you're literally just looking over features of her body to make sure they match her as you smooth the clay out. Um, this clay has this little bit of sparkling dust, and when you look more closely at it, Fulcrum, it is laced with a lot of diamonds. A lot. Um, just from your passive, you would guess at least a thousand gold worth of diamond. And yeah, she's helping you shape it and mold it, and sh she'll easily just show you aspects of herself being like, yes, make sure you get the shoulder blades up here properly. Don't worry about that side, I'll get it myself and handles it properly. At least a thousand, Ogan. Yeah, and just take my time making sure I'm doing it the best oh. I can. The entire time she's uh, speaking to you of the intricate systems of magic as it works, it's interesting. Um, roll me an Arcana check. Twenty-eight. She is reading to you as if she's reading off a piece of paper from her mind. Like she has a perfect memory, but she doesn't actually know the intricate systems of, you know, magic. It's one thing to know, you know, E equals MC squared or MC hammer or whatever, but it's different to actually know how physics work. Um, she's describing it to you. She's remarkably intelligent, but she is not an arcanist in your regard. Um, in fact, what you are doing is creating a shell that theoretically, if you rip a section of her soul out of, you'll be able to leave that section in this body, kill this form, and you're con creating a connection to this clay doll of sorts that you are crafting. And the remainder of her soul is going to be filtered through into that and she will be recrafted as that. And her theory is actually pretty good that it will reconstruct her tether to Solemn. And now you know why she needed that component of Solemn, because that dirt is the tethering point that you are trying to attach itself to. Over the next five hours or so, you go through this very, very exhausting process of magic and manipulation of the clay, filtering these chalk all around, creating the uh, pathways between the magic to connect the two points together and double, triple, quadruple checking yourself every step of the way as she is helping you remarkably. But again, you're the arcanist. She is not. After about five hours or so, you both lean backwards. Her hair, she has to remove her tie and then retie it back up. Um, her hair is re way longer than you would have guessed. It goes down to about her waist. Um, but she keeps it tied so high up and in a bun that it only looks maybe just past shoulder, maybe mid-back length. So, what are your thoughts on this? Will it work? I believe it will. <clears throat> um, Remarkable. Everything you've described, it should it should definitely work. Well, that is good. That is very good. This is... Uh, the expectation. Fulcrum. She begins speaking Celestial. Rowan, do you understand Celestial? Nope. Okay. Uh, Fulcrum, you do, and she does as well. In Perfect Celestial, you have insights into what's going on here, correct? I believe so, yes. I am doing the right thing, of course. I... After what I've saw today and in the plaques, that's, I believe you are. I, 
it could be good for you to go back and get back and be with your daughter. Yes. It can be different. Very good. So, she hands you the dagger and lies down next to the clay doll. Remember, quick. And you have less than two hours to complete the full incantation of magic. She looks up at you. Do not mess this up, or else I will find a way to make every aspect of your life a living hell. Yes, it is my intention to not mess up and... Death is not something I... Well believe that I would accept to keep me down. Go on then. And she just lies completely vulnerable on the ground. Please roll me a d20. <laughs> Two things say thank you for thank you for this opportunity. And then um, I'm going to use my <laughs> inspiration. I mean, this would be, I mean, not everyone gets involved in this kind of Thank you for stuff. letting me kill you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I always dreamed of this, you know? Just... <laughs> Right. I'm surprised Rowan hasn't walked up. Can I do it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you wanted a D20 straight. game advantage. Yep, straight uh, does, D20. Does guidance help? If you wish to guidance yourself, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Plus two. Roll one D20. Roll another. Oh. go 15. so a total of a 15 not bad as you plunge the dagger into her chest immediately there is a loud slam in this area a quaking of the entire establishment you are inside of and you feel it begin pulsing aggressively. You hear a very deep rumble in your direction. Though you have plunged the dagger perfectly into her heart, you have two hours full. You begin reading your incantation, and this is going to be a skill challenge for you. I need you first to roll me an arcana check. Guidance can be up the whole time. Okay. Cool. Or for only one of these. After that, you're okay. speaking the whole time, so you can't do it again. Okay, you are correct. Is it only on the first one, or can I make a choice? You guess can I choose can... which of the aspects okay. you want to use it on, but only one. Okay. So, first one is arcana. I'm not using it yet. 16. 16. You begin reading the incantation, but every now and again, the entire area just convulses with this amount of magic. You've never controlled magic like this before. You've never delved into necromancy before. Not this deep, at least. And it is something very difficult. The pressure is waning on you, and you feel sweat pouring down your face as you are reading the incantation, holding the dagger, and using it to pull magic as if it is a thread into very specific directions, drawing onto the floor to reinforce where different aspects could be. The next component of this is going to be a con save. This counts as making con it's maintaining concentration on a spell, so if you have Warcaster, it will apply. Oh, I do. I do, I do. Okay, well. Okay. Um, that gives you advantage. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, do a quick question. Um, point of order. Um, so I have advantage. I can roll two dice. The guidance, do I have to declare that before I roll both dice? Uh, no. You can roll it retroactively. 
Okay, so... Um, roll again, because you roll at advantage. I'm going to do the guidance, which is d4. That is correct. <sighs> 13. Your eyes are becoming very, very heavy. Yeah, I know, Ogan. I'm just giving it. They're becoming exhaustively heavy. And maintaining this spell, you feel it is fleeting away from you. It is something that your mind was not ready to wrap around ever. Mm -hmm. And it is definitely a fleeting component of this spell. And for the last part, as you are doing this, you hear a deep, purring voice move towards you. Do not do this, Fulcrum. She's mine. Give me a charisma saving throw as your last check. Shit. Okay, everyone wish me luck, because... Can... I know Inn was busy in there, but you said that there was a... A literal quaking. So Inn would definitely come out and seeing that. Can I give Fulcrum an inspiration? Sure. What do you say? Nothing. Just a hand on the shoulder and a nod. You get to add a d6 to this Fulcrum. But that's all you got left. Thank you. Oops. I did not mean to hit that twice. I was trying to roll. We go with the first Gosh. one. And I'll roll Good your roll. d6. One d6. 20. Dirty Thank 20. Thank you, Ann. As you are feeling this presence, this voice, it almost seems to be pooling at your tether. Now you can feel your own connection, now that you are aware of the spiritual connections people have to their homes. And you feel this entity is almost reaching yours and dragging you towards it. But you maintain your focus without quivering your very intricate stream of foreign words to everybody else in this room. This is a level of comprehension nobody else here can aspire to and after two long grueling hours of this process over and over you watch as all of the magic in the room floods towards the two bodies and both of them crumble to ash Is she dead? Fulcrum, I need you to roll me a d4. A one. You suffer two levels of exhaustion from this ritual. And I just collapse. <sighs> Was that supposed to happen? I, uh, um, I'm sorry, what, Gabe, sweetheart? What, uh, just give me a moment. And I'll try to... I'm going to slowly kind of curl up and try to get up and lean against something. So I'm sitting in a sitting position, but leaning back against the altar. A table, a bolt altar. Yeah, and something, yeah. Well, let's, let's hope that worked. Well, I mean, what are the chances that it didn't? At some point in time, it did, I'm sure, but... 
I don't know. I'm of never... note, Fulcrum, there's no dilation here that you've experienced thus far. You are present. Hmm. Um. <laughs> it's funny in saying that it's made me realize something. Um. There's a chance it didn't work, but I. I think it did. But we probably won't know until we go back to Solomon and see maybe see her again. Yes. Okay. Although I kind of like it here in a strange sort of way. It feels weird, but it's... I can't quite put my finger on it. Or rather, I can? I don't know. Oh, I just uh, think I need some sleep. Take a rest for him. Oh, yes. Rest. And I'll let my eyes close. very easy. You just drift to sleep. No ambient noise of people who have or will travel here. No delays of heat or cold. Just the other three. I'm going to go back to the coffin and uh, I'm going to see if there's any sort of like statuette or something on the outside of coffin on the plaque there is a gold etching into an M as with all of them of what you could presume she looked like tiefling clearly um, mannerful legs crossed two long rapiers by her side her horns jut up back and swoop upwards she has a very strong but elegant look about her Her eyes are terrible. You have to imagine Luna was right. She was devastating on the battlefield. And I assume you commit that to memory. I was actually going to try and take it. You want to try? Yeah. Give me a strength check. Not bad. You kind Holy of like shit. dig your nails <laughs> around it. You know, chiseling away and flaking and breaking your nails all over the place, but 
you manage to uh, loosen the gold that tethered it to the sarcophagus. And then I'll put it with my things, and then I'll put my hand on it. And... I'm sorry. I just wanted to have something from you. Well, kid, she can't hear you. Huh? You turn her over, and the statue has moved its head over toward you. That statue of Ares. Gave his poor sword out, uh, saying uh, in defense. No, aren't you so cute? <laughs> you have a little toothpick. Huh. At this point, Zen, thank you for mango dye. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what did the mango they got dye do? It rolls very poorly. No. So the uh, statue begins bending and standing off as it walks over towards you and and uh, just plops think... itself right on top of the sarcophagus. Okay. Ugh. Aries? Yeah, that's me. Is his hair like a blue flame? Uh, no, no. He is that's a Hades. goat man. That was Hades. Yes. yes. Um, uh, he is massively buff, actually. Uh, he extends his hand downwards towards you, N. Uh, the name's Ares, god of war, god of fine cuisine, and god of battlefield respect. Pleasure to meet you. N. Syed. Uh, your name's weird. I'm from Solemn? What's that? Eh, never mind, I don't care. Got any food around here? And you do hear this voice growling through the chambers of this area. Yeah, I've got... And and I'll pull out... I'm sure there's a really nice bottle of wine that is... I think it's stolen from Luna. Yeah. Actually, that's so Lucifon's stash, not hers. Well, uh, and I'll pull out the bottle from... Ooh, Lucifon stash. My and lamb. Wonderful. There's some really nice. Do we have a fine there? wine to go with it? And he like plucks his finger into the cork and boom, pulls it out easily. I think so. Hmm. <laughs> and takes her stuff and he's just like handing it out. He lies across the sarcophagus and looks over at you, Gabe. Hey, pretty boy. What's your name? You know, you're standing in the, uh... He's trying to get the quirk off his finger. You're standing in the presence of a god. You might want to be It'll a little help. nicer. Oh. <laughs> Gabriel, there and he lowers his sword, but keeps a hold of it. Gabriel. Well, isn't that biblical? <laughs> nice to meet you. Hey, who are these other people you have down here? Are any of them enemies? Should I kill them? No, they're... Huh? They're friends. Oh, uh, you mean your friends. They're not my friends. They can't even have the respect to, uh, you know, give me a proper offering. Anything like that. Rude. Um, we didn't realize you were a god. Oh. Oh. I, I, uh, um. Well, that's, um, maybe bad on my part. Probably bad publicity. Yeah. I should we're definitely get more people talking about me. You know, nowadays, it's mostly just the fatties, but I gotta admit, I love the fatties. They're great. The fine f cuisine. Yeah. Uh, we're the from... Best. I think we're from a different plane of existence. Oh, I yeah, think like hell? From called it. Are you from hell? Apparently, I'm descended from it. Um, oh. Oh, no. uh, did you take um, Truth's emblem because of that? Wait, are you Truth's child? Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, I guess I won't eviscerate. I could understand why you would want to. Oh, yeah, you desecrated her grave. But I mean, technically, it's your grave, too. So. Oh, oh. 
I didn't mean to, just... Rowan, do you walk in? Yep, dazed as fuck. You look inside, and there is roughly a ten-foot-tall, large, gray-skinned, horned goat man with these large legs that look like ends, but way more muscular, who's just lying across the sarcophagus, currently drinking directly from a bottle of wine. <laughs> he's tall, he's her type. <laughs> yep, he definitely is. <laughs> so, I don't kill that one. Right. Please don't. Okay, what about the sleeping man? Uh, please don't kill him either. Oh, you all are so boring. Is there anyone I could kill? Gabe just looks over at uh, the uh, dragon and uh, says, It's don't glaring you... at you, Gabe. Don't <laughs> you dare. He didn't say anything. <laughs> And is proactively, don't you there, and like pointing their finger. Hey, oh uh, hey, other person, Ares, god of war, fine cuisine, battlefield traditions. Nice to meet you. Ah, uh. Rowan, person of the forest. Nice to meet you. She'll hold her hand up. Oh, oh, cool. Uh, he uh shakes your hand, and his hand's already dirty from all the food. Wonderful. So, uh, what are your sacrifices? Huh? Looks at Rowan and Gabe. Hmm. Rowan will reach into her fanny pack. Pull out some of Frank's cheese. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to offer him Frank. I mean, he would accept Frank uh -huh. into his army. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey, look at that. Moldy cheese. That's flavor. Ugh. Is that cow's milk? It might be. Frank, Ooh. was that cow's milk? Oh. He's just staring eyes wide like, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you, do you speak rodent? Yes. That's cool. That's cool. I could teach you sometime. I'm not a learning type of person. I can respect that. Yeah. Learning's boring. I like, uh, doing. And they've already killed the bottle of wine and is currently just tossing it up and down, catching it. Hmm. So, you desecrated the grave for that. I have to punish you. You understand, right? Um, it's kind of my job. Uh, so, uh, all right, come here. walk up and try to be as brave as they can be. <laughs> what are you do gonna do to her? Them. Thank you. Them. Oh! Oh, you're one of those people, too. Cool. We got a bunch of those that work for me nowadays. They're awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. People stopped caring about fighting so much, and then they actually went, hey, just because I got this, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's one of the perks of being a god. You know, I can change my shit as I want. <laughs> I, w I would suppose so, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm curious. He just looks up. Yeah, no. Anyways. So. I have to punish them. Yeah, I'll get the hang of that one. Just give me a minute. I have to punish them for desecrating the gravesite of a uh, fallen champion who I chose to honor even in their death. Punish how, uh, Gabe says darkly. I'm sorry. You, you look, he like rotates around and he's now straddling the sarcophagus, like hands on the front of it, leaning forward. You look like you're ready to fight. Yeah, I can see it. I can sense it. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'll tell you what. Take one good swing at me. No, thank you. Please. If you don't, I'll break every single bone in their left arm, including hand. Gabe swings at him. Go ahead and roll an attack. Hey, hey, hey. 
attack. Um, you swing oh, yeah. over towards him, and with a blinding speed that you can't even keep track of, he's already whoosh, standing and right behind you, missing out of the way. Uh-uh. That doesn't work. Okay, so you're boring too. He kind of just like easily pushes you out of his way. All right, uh, punishment, 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 punishment. Um, what are we thinking? You know, I, I like creative suggestions. What are we thinking? Ah, I have an idea. N, you said your name was? Yeah. I thought that was a letter. Anyways, N. I'm going to remove your ability to taste. Go ahead. It just looks like <laughs> How does that make you feel? Awful. No, I don't do creepy shit. Um... Well, would you rather me break your arm? Actually, yes. Really? Yeah. Well, that Is has it, it. Like, wine and food. They immediately grab your arm and just... Ah, every ah. single bone all the way down your arm is now broken. Uh, give me a con save. Uh, you pass out immediately. Just... Ah. Gabe rushes in and and grabs her. Them. Them, uh, lifting her, them, into his arms. Yep. Uh, hey, they asked for it, not me. I was prepared just to take away their sense of taste. Oh. But you know, that's, that's a good call. I think I would have taken that call as well. Gabe just silently stares at him for a second and then walks out with her. Them. Them. Uh, there's a medical bay, um, two rooms down to the left. Go ahead and use whatever you need. I believe we have healing ointments and shit like that. Hmm. When he's out of the range, Gabe will put in lesser restoration into her and, them. uh, them and, uh, and, uh, healing. Okay. Lesser restoration, unfortunately, does not help with broken bones. Healing, however, um, roll me a medicine check as you do that. You manage to set the bones properly, but it is going to cost you 40 points of healing total. Okay. But you set all of them, and, and you wake up, and you... Oh, oh, your head hurts. Okay, okay put, me, put me down. <laughs> okay. So much disrespect. <laughs> hmm. Gabe, press her down onto her feet. Them. Down uh, onto to their feet. Speaking of, <sighs> while they're doing that, that probably took like twenty minutes at least. Uh, Rowan, you're left in the room alone with Ares, who like he just itches his ass, walks around the area, and then. Turns and looks back at you. That's so scary. Oh my god. Hey, how's it going? Fine. Uh. Yeah. What's what your you little like fella name? Huh? Oh, Frank. Yeah, that Frank. I. Yeah, this is. Hi. This is Frank. And Hello? she'll hold him out. Whoa, that is the buffest little rat I've ever seen. He's really into him? working out. Anything, really. Really? Can he eat people? Frank, have you ever eaten a person? He turns to you. You told me not to talk about this. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, the answer is no, Aries. Ah. Oh. Well, you can keep trying, little guy. And he gives them, like, a little high five with one finger, and it's all of Frank's body who just, like... This one is scary. 
He's big. Yeah. Really big. So what's the deal here? I heard that there was some other person here who I wasn't allowed to kill. Not for lack of trying. Um, and... Yeah. Oh, Fulcrum? And Rowan will point to Fulcrum. No, 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 no. The, the, uh, the woman, she was here way longer than all of them. Oh, the, um, the one with the long hair? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, that one, and she'll point at Fulcrum, stabbed the woman with the long hair, and then she, you know, turned to dust, and... Oh, hey, that's no fun. He gets to kill someone, but I don't. Fucking bullshit. Oh, I should have raised your hand sooner. Maybe your friend should have stole my emblem sooner. Oh. I'm only have... allowed to come here when people desecrate the area. Ugh. Do you get many visitors desecrating down here? Not recently, no. I mean, once yeah. upon a time ago, there was people who wanted to resurrect champions to fight on their side. And, well, every time they come down here and do that, I just come by and uh, he waves his hand and this massive glaive appears that has like at least a 15 foot reach and like a five foot blade at the end of it. And I just, whoosh, and they're dead. <laughs> Good times. Hmm. They told me I could hire creatures to do that for me. Or I, uh, I, um, create celestial beings. But I feel so hands off, you know? I prefer the personal touch. You know, if I'm gonna kill someone, I'm gonna kill them myself. I can tell someone else to kill someone. That's not fair. What if they don't want to kill someone because we have different belief systems? Doesn't sound cool to me. Mm. That's very fair. Yeah. Do yeah. you pay attention to stuff that's going on around here? Or oh, really? oh, uh, I try. Do you... So the one with the the long hair that that one over there stabbed... Yeah. Do you know what what was keeping her <clears throat> held here? Or oh. Who? Oh, I have no idea. Um, She came down here looking for information and shit. And, like, she tried going into one of my um off-limit rooms. And, you know, I appeared... Um, I tried to kill her, but then she just came back to life. And then I tried to kill her again, and then she just came back to life. And then, you know, uh, ten more times. Um, and then at that point, like, how many times do you have to kill someone for them to die? I just got so bored, I stopped. Yeah. What room was she trying to get into? <laughs> My artifact chamber. Oh. Yeah. Do you know why? No. Probably artifacts. Are they special artifacts or just stuff you think looks cool? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, both. Mm. I have this and thing. It's called a cast iron skillet. What does it do? Every time you use it, it makes food taste better. But if you clean it, it resets. You can't use soap on it? Oh. I mean, water, sure, and, you know, like, scrape away the flakes a little bit, but each time you use it, food just gets better and better. It's so good. Could I see this cast iron skillet? <laughs> no, it's mine. Oh, I mean... You can't have it. Anything. It's mine. I just want to, like, no. look at it. It's mine. I'll let you hold Frank. Frank? Can I put him in the skillet? Yeah, but you can't heat him up. Then what's the point of putting him in a skillet? You know, you all are just so ungrateful, you damn humanoids. Fucking living in shit and your mentality. And he just steps back up onto the pony. I'm done with this bullshit. If you break in there, I kill you and your Frank. And then he, like, turns back into his statue with his finger pointing down at you. <laughs> Rona looked down at Frank. He was kind of a dick, Frank. Da, very dickish. But also kind of cool. Yeah, kind of. Cooler than most of your friends. Your friends are pretty nerdy. That's fair. Yeah. And now... Frank, how at, much... hmm? Go ahead. 
No, what were you saying? I was going to say, Frank, how much do you think Ares works out? That looked all natural. Hmm. You know, some people are blessed. Not like us, right? Right. It's okay. More squat lunges. And he just starts doing that across your shoulder. <laughs> Get it, Frank. <laughs> He's now working on the glutes. His upper body's good. He needs to work on the lower body. Um, but anyway. Skip leg day. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, but now at this point, this is where you hear N yelling at Gabe in the hallway. Get off me. <laughs> Bro, it'll walk out. Gabriel, what is going on? I healed her. Them. Damn, Gabe. Them. You also took me away from the one person who could really tell me about my mom. He broke your arm and made you pass out. It's true, and you went down like a leaf. <laughs> okay, so that <laughs> might be true, but... How can he tell you anything if you're unconscious? Then just heal me there and wake me back up. Well, I have really bad news. Frank offended Ares, and now he's a statue again. <laughs> Frank just turns to you like, what the fuck? <laughs> Shh, and Ronald push him back into the fanny pack. <laughs> oh, that's so rude. <laughs> well, at least uh, he didn't get possessed by a god. Damn uh, straight! From inside the bag. At least I didn't get possessed. That's That's just... That's just going to be what I compare everything else to, apparently. Um, hey, uh, you didn't seem to enjoy being in the um, binders, all the spreaders all the time. I don't enjoy sleeping in them. Okay. So, are we done here? Yeah, and in pulls out the picture, the little effigy, and turns it to show the the other two. You all get to look at N's mom. Or some depiction of her for the first time mm. ever. And the features in the face are similar. Nowhere else. <laughs> and does not look like a badass, unfortunately. You're dressed really nice, but you're definitely not a badass. Not a badass. But no. you all eventually find your way back over to the chamber Fulcrum's in, and I assume hunker down for a few hours of sleep at least. And then... Wake up to decide what you're going to be doing for the rest of this journey. Anyways, I think this is where we are ending the session this week. Keep in mind, next week we do not have a session because we are going to I am going to be on vacation. However, stay tuned for next Saturday, Saturday the November 21st, as that will be the very first session of Synodic Drift. One of the cast games I'm running that's actually inside of Zodiac. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Players, thank you very much for playing. Viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you all had a good time, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.